The other day I released Average Villain Entrance and it is extremely VFX heavy so today I'm going to break down how I did the effects. Go watch it if you'd like and let's get to it. For the filming process you could call it unprofessional, primitive if you will. Yeah, we kind of just filmed the shots mostly on a green screen, sometimes not at all. We kind of just hoped it would work out. However, the main thing to get right was the lighting. So we filmed around 4pm when the sun was angled towards me and behind Isaac, this guy. And yes, for this shot, I just walked on the spot in front of the green screen. A truly innovative concept. Before I started making individual shots, I decided to make the entire terrain first and make it work with a full 360 degree field of view. That way I wouldn't be limited by what camera angles I choose. Alright, I added in a basic large terrain mesh and squished it down. I used this really amazing blend add-on called True Terrain to texture the landscape, blending together a mixture of dirt and rock textures until I got a look that I liked. These textures also have puddles on them, which creates a muddy look, adding to the realism. I lit the scene using an add-on called Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. However, it could also be done with Blender's built-in sky texture. I simply lowered the sun down to create a sunset look and rotated it so it would be behind Isaac and shining directly onto myself as it was like in the original footage. To the surprise of no one, I then used another add-on to create the forest. It's called Alpha Trees and uses 2D planes to create massive forests. I selected my landscape mesh and moved over to weight painting, colouring it where I wanted the trees to be. Then over in the Alpha Trees panel, under the density, I picked my weight painting group. As you can see here, the red is where the trees will be, and the blue is where they aren't. Because that's where my army is. See, look, there they are, down there. Let's talk about my army. I got this guy from ProductionCrate.com. I also got his gun there too. I downloaded this idle animation from Mixamo, but deleted all of the animation keyframes except for the first one, so he wouldn't move. I gave him his gun, he will now do whatever I want, because good soldiers follow orders. To make lots of them, I added a plane, stretching it to be a rectangle. I added a particle simulation, making it distribute as a grid. I made the resolution 20, which gave me a number that I liked. I increased the lifetime of the particles so that they wouldn't turn off randomly, and made them stop spawning after frame 1. Oh yeah, and under render, I selected object, then picked my guy. Gravity 0 and Velocity 0. They shan't be falling on my watch. Now I can't say I would recommend this scattering technique if your terrain is very bumpy. Uh, for that you might need to use geometry nodes, however I feel like I get away with it here. Yeah. Moving on to the keying process. The shots that I'd actually bothered to film in front of the green screen went quite well actually. However the ones that weren't were a little irritating. I had to use Runway AI to rotoscope myself out and then did a bunch of manual masking to tidy it up. Okay, now that everything is prepped and ready, the footage is keyed and the landscape is created, it is now time for the really fun part which is getting all the cool camera angles and making the scene. It really was just a process of adding in cameras, adding in the keyed footage as the background but bringing it to the front and then aligning them as best as I could to the landscape with regard to the focal length, height and angle of the camera that I'd filmed with. For these cool shots of me walking through the army, it ended up being a lot simpler than I had expected. I got the keyed footage of me walking in a straight line and imported that using the Images as Planes add-on. I put this footage right in the middle of my army, making sure to get the scale correct so that I looked just a bit shorter than the soldiers. Next up, I added in a new camera and animated it to track alongside the army and myself. I used noise modifiers on the rotation axes to give it a handheld look. And since the footage of me was in fact quite terrible, I set the focal distance to be on the soldiers so that I would be out of focus. Yep, I know, I could have just filmed a better shot and keyed it out correctly and I wouldn't have to be out of focus, but um... Yeah. Oh, and there's the shots of the ship. I got that from Sketchfab, I cannot remember what it's called, but it is on screen right now. I simply brought this ship into my scene and did some very basic animation for it. It kind of just moves in a straight line. 
For the landing sequence, I moved across to my timeline to when the ship would be landed and set the model up to be in its landing position. I added a keyframe at that point, then went back in the timeline and added another keyframe to where it would fly in. I then went through adding extra keyframes to give it a bit more variation and just make it look better. And once again, I used noise modifiers to give it that real wobbly feeling as I went down and landed. I brought all of the Blender stuff into my compositor of choice, which is HitFilm Pro, to do compositing. I gave all of the CG layers a slight amount of blur, just to take those perfect edges off of them. A bunch of grain was added to make it look like they were actually filmed with a camera. Then on the live action footage, I darkened them a bit to make it look like sunset. I also added some dust kicking up, just to add a bit of life to the shots. To tie everything together, I used some lens flares and lens dirt, just to make the camera lens look a bit grubby. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, I hope you learnt something. If you have any tips and tricks for me, put them in the comments. I'd like to learn more. Um, yeah, that's really about it. Goodbye.